to the uh, 13th chapter of Luke. Luke, the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 1, and we're just going to read tonight through verse 5. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. This tonight is just a very simple word of exhortation. We've had such a full day and an active day today. We stand in honor of the reading of God's word, and I read tonight, of course, from the King James text. There were present at that season some that told him, meaning Jesus, of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans, because they suffered such things? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Master, we thank you, God, for your word this evening. We ask God tonight that your anointing and your presence would rest upon your word. Encourage our hearts today. Lift us up, we pray, that our faith be magnified. God, in this place, as the word of God goes forth, Grant it, we pray, for we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated tonight. And again, I'm going to tell you, this should be a fairly short word of exhortation this evening. You know, every time something bad happens, folks want to assign blame. People want to figure out whose fault it is that thus and such happened. And it was no different in biblical times. It was no different in the Lord's day. As the Lord was speaking to his disciples this day, he mentioned two very uh, tragic incidents that had occurred, things that uh, were well known to everybody, things that had happened that uh, the word got out and got around and everybody had heard about it, kind of be like our 9-11, you know, something that uh, had really been in the news, you might say, and had really traveled around a bit. And the Lord said, do you think that this happened to these individuals because they were sinners above all uh, everybody else? That's the common way for people to think. You know, they have to assign some sort of blame. There, somebody has to be guilty or else bad things wouldn't happen. Now, my Bible tells me that God causes the rain to fall upon the just and the unjust. You see, Paige, one of the wonderful things about being a Christian is when it rains for us, it waters the crops. Amen? Amen. You see... Uh, the same thing can happen to two different people, a believer and an unbeliever. And for the believer, it can be a constructive experience. It can, be, uh, it can sometimes be a negative experience, but at the same time, the Bible said all things work together for our good to those that love God and who are the called according to his purpose. So even though the same negative uh, experience can occur to two different people, one a believer and one an unbeliever, ultimately it will benefit the believer and it will devastate the unbeliever. Do you hear me now? Amen. So even though the word of God promises that God causes it to rain, upon the just and the unjust, you know, the weather can't always be sunshine. It can't always be rosy. It can't always be beautiful. As the old saying goes, it can't always be springtime. Sometimes we've got to weather the winters. Sometimes we've got to weather, I don't know about you, but here in Texas, when it's summer, I pray for winter. When it's winter, I pray for summer. Amen. Amen. When you're cold, you're saying, Lord, I wish it would warm up and be summer again. And then when summer comes and you're sweating and it's so hot, you're saying, oh, Lord, I wish winter would come back again. We, we can never be satisfied. But you know, the wonderful thing, as a child of God, we know that God is looking out for our well-being. We know that the Lord has always got our back. We know that he is constantly uh, working 
working on our behalf to make sure that everything that comes our way ultimately benefits us. Yes, so when it rains on the just man and it rains on the unjust man, there may be two different reactions. Yes, because the ultimate end of that rain is going to be different for each of those two. Do you understand amen. what I'm saying? Yes, amen. amen. When the storm hit uh, Louisiana here a couple of years back, Hurricane Katrina, you know, a lot of people begin, well, you know how that city is. New Orleans is nothing but a big old godless, hideous city. And that's why God caused that to happen to that city, because it's such a wicked and evil city. And blah, blah, and everybody's a sign of blame. Honey, they built a city uh, many, many, many feet below sea level. The only thing that separates it from the ocean waters are man-made structures and man-made dams and, yep. and man-made uh, blockades. At some point, a serious storm was going to cause that city damage. Amen. Amen. It's not always about judgment. It's not always Amen. about God trying Amen. to, uh, you know, wreak havoc Amen. on the wicked and, and all this sort of thing. My Bible said it's the goodness of God that leadeth men unto repentance. I'm going to tell you something. God is more interested in your loving Him and serving Him Amen. because you understand His goodness and His mercy and His love than He is your wanting to serve Him because you're terrified he's going to wipe you out. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. God wants us to worship him and serve him and know him and love him because the word of God declares he first loved us. That's right. Amen. He doesn't want us to respond page to his anger. God does. Who in the world wants somebody to love them because if they don't, you're going to beat them silly. Yes, that's right. Amen. There are men and even some women I hear in this world yeah. who think that they can force another human being to love them yeah, right. if they beat them enough. Amen. Yeah, right. If they abuse them enough. And you know that the relationships that are born out of this kind of a, uh, of a situation are not healthy. They're not good relationships. They're not beneficial. They're not positive. Right. But I'm here to tell you, a lot of churches tonight have a whole lot more people in them than ours does. And the reason is because a lot of people that are there tonight because they're terrified of God. Amen. Hello now. That's right. The preacher spends more of his time, Tommy, trying to preach fear into the heart of his hearer than he does preaching the love of God. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't want the one church ever to be filled up with fearful people. That's I want right. the one church to be filled up with people who love God Amen. and appreciate Amen. the grace of God and are grateful for what God's done for them. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, when years, uh, eight years ago, when I was lying in a hospital bed and the doctors had given me up for lost and they said, he's not going to live, it's just a matter of time. Uh, we don't expect them to survive. There's 0% chance of survival. I'm here to tell you, I had people in my own family who were looking and saying, See, that's God's judgment. Uh, yeah. That kind of church he's trying to pastor, that kind of ministry that he's yeah. engaged in, God is judging him for the work that he's doing, and God is judging him uh, for the message that he's preaching. And I said it this morning in prayer, and I'll say it again. What do they have to say now? Hallelujah. Right. I'm here to tell you now. Listen to me when I tell you. God didn't ask me when I spoke to him in that desperate state and in that desperate condition. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, Do you want to come home? 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 Or do you want to stay? Hallelujah to God. He didn't say, Are you going to quit preaching what you've been preaching? Are you going to quit saying what you've been saying?
my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Enter into the rest of the Lord. Amen. I look forward to that day. Amen. You know, there's an old song. They don't sing songs like this anymore. Yeah. Nowadays, we've got these wonderful, inspiring songs that are, you know, modern, contemporary, that just twirl you out of your seat. They're so inspired of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. 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 You're really neato. You're really groovy. I think you're a real cool God. <laughs> Yahoo, Jesus. Jesus. See, that's the kind of music we have nowadays. The words are just so inspiring that they bring you to your feet. Yeah, okay. But you know what? There were songs we used to sing years ago. One song I think of. So many of them I think of. But one of them I think of that really speaks to my heart. And that's the old song that says, I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. Amen. And I think about that old song Amen. and how folk used to sing back in the days, I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. Because that Amen. was the cry of their heart. Right. Lord, when it's all said and done, I want you to be happy with what I've done. Amen. When I go to bed at night, I want you to be happy with how I spend my day. I want my Lord to be satisfied with me. Amen. Amen. And there's a, a, an old song, that, again, that I love to hear, and I listen to it sometimes in the car on the CD player, and every time I hear it, it touches me. And it says, uh, is the place you're called to labor, or excuse me, does the place you're called to labor seem so small? And so unknown. Oh, but it's great if God is in it. Yes, for yes. he'll not forsake his own. Amen. Little is much when God is in it. Labor not for wealth or gain. There's a crown and you can win it. If you'll go in Jesus' name. Amen. Now see, I don't know about you, Paige. I'd rather a song like that than that old Jesus, hallelujah, glory, you're a groovy God. I'd rather something like that because that speaks to my spirit. Amen. And that speaks to my heart. But I'm going to tell you, folks, a lot of people want to try to second guess why things happen in our life. Jesus uh, gave an example at one point in Scripture. He pointed to a man and said, this man was born in the condition that he's in. He said, why do you suppose? Whose sin do you think it was uh, caused this? Was it his parents' sin or was it his own sin? Well, first of all, he was born in that condition. So it's not likely that it was his own sin. So well, whose sin do you suppose? And then he answered and said, I'll tell you what, it wasn't neither. He said, this man was born this way for the glory of God. He said, God, had I allowed this man to be born this way so that at this moment in time I could do something wonderful and miraculous for him and at the same time show y'all something. Amen. I'm going to tell you today. We, we want to assign blame. We want to find out whose fault is it and why is this happening. It's happening so that God can prove himself wonderful. So that God can show his love. So that God can show his mercy. I'm going to tell you, my grandmother was probably one of them at the head of the line thinking to herself, well, I know this is God. God just really take him out of here because he ain't doing right. Yeah, that's right. She had that old critical, judgmental, attitude. And I'm going to tell you, my grandmother looked me in the eye with tears streaming down her face after I got out of the hospital and said to me one time, she said, I'll tell you one thing. If I've ever in my life seen God give somebody a miracle, yes, amen. he gave you a miracle. Amen. She said, you were laying in that bed 135 pounds by the time it was all said and done. Right. She said, here you lay in that bed 135 pounds. Said, and the doctors had no hope for you whatsoever. Right. Said, but here you stand today, and you're still doing what you were doing Amen. before you went in. Uh huh. You know why, Andy? It's not always about blame. That's it's right. not always Amen. about somebody doing the wrong That's thing right. or Amen. gleaning God's judgment. I'm going to tell you, my Bible said it's appointed unto God. Uh, excuse me, it's appointed unto man once to die, That's and right. then the judgment. That's right. Amen. Hello. 
It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Amen. When bad things happen, sometimes bad things happen to people because of their own choices. There's an old saying in scripture, you reap what you sow. Amen. You get back what you put in. If you run around doing evil and treating people poorly and all, and it comes back at you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that's just why bad things happen. It's because we have planted and now it's time to reap. Yeah, but at the same time, sometimes bad things happen and it doesn't have a thing in the world to do with what you've done or who you are, it has to do with where you're standing when that particular event occurs. Amen? Amen. I, I preached a message before Hurricane Katrina that was very prophetic. I talked about the fact that God was bringing judgment against this nation, not individuals, against this nation as a country because we have wanted to claim that we're such a godly country. We're a Christian nation. And yet, we are so slack in our responsibility toward God. If we are the Christian nation we claim to be, then we ought to be approaching things a whole lot differently than we do. I got news for you. Tit for tat doesn't work. It's not part of Christianity. That's right, amen. Amen. Jesus said, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye, amen. He said, but I'm telling you, somebody slaps you, you just hold your ground and you just look them square in the eye and don't don't be a wimp, don't cower right. away. But at the same time, don't start a fight either. That's right. Yep. Turn the other cheek. That's right. That doesn't mean you gotta cower and run away like a little baby. He didn't yeah. say that. That's right. But he said, don't be argumentative. Don't look to start a war or start a fight every time. Right. We took the attitude when we got hit on 9-11, well, it's time to pay back. Yeah, that's right. We got to get back at those people who did us dirty. Mm -hmm. And then we wound up picking somebody that wasn't even involved in the fight to start with. That's right, amen. But you see, that's not the way a, a godly nation that claims Christianity as its primary faith, that's not the way we ought to operate, Paige. That's right, amen. And God said, I'm... I am bringing judgment to this country because before the world is judged during the course of the great tribulation, yeah. the word of God tells us that judgment must first begin in the house, in the house of God. Yes, God's got clean house in the church. That's right. He can't possibly give the world a good slap on the behind until first yes. he takes his own kids That's right. and straightens them out. Amen. Amen. The only thing I hate to see is somebody who's got kids that act like devils and they're more worried about straightening everybody else's yes, kids right. out Amen. than taking care of their own. That's right. Amen. Amen. God don't do that. Amen. He said, before I can uh, level judgment in the world during the great tribulation period, I first have got to bring judgment and equity into the church. I've got to get my own kids to act right. I've got to get my own people to act right. Because if I don't, it would be unfair and unjust, and God is not an unjust God. Amen. Right, yeah. He's going to do it right, or he's not going to do it at all. Yeah. So the reality today is this. Do, does the Lord sometimes act? Does he sometimes uh, act in the way of judgment or correction? Absolutely. The Word of God said that if God did it, we'd all be bastards. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. That's what the Word of God said, word for word. Some of y'all looking at me, your eyes are so big, I could put plates over them, you'd still see. Oh, brother, did God say that? <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, he did. He said, if we don't have, if our father doesn't correct us yes, when we do right. wrong, that's right. then we would be fatherless children. We'd that's be right. bastards. We wouldn't have a father. Said so part of the responsibility of a father is to help us uh, maintain the right path. Amen. It's to guide us and give us guidance. Yeah. So sometimes things happen in our life. You know, sometimes, Paige, we don't understand why. Well, Lord, I've been praying for this or I've been praying yeah, for that and right. it's not coming. Well, maybe for a minute we need to stop and think. But you know what? If I had that, I'd probably... I'm going to use an example, and, and don't get upset with the preacher now. If God gave me a job and I had the money, I'd probably spend it on all the wrong things. Yes, amen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You hear me? Yeah. 
So one of the ways the Lord tries to keep us in the right path, to keep us on the straight and narrow, is to keep you broke. <laughs> Amen. Do you hear me? Yeah. Amen. And you say, well, brother, I don't like that idea. Well, then straighten up and fly right so God can give you the other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Say, sometimes we need to recognize that the brook Kidron is drying up all right for a reason, because God wants to move us. He's trying to put us in a different direction, and he's using circumstances to try to speak to us. Amen. Amen. Saying, all right, Charles, I'll tell you what, you aren't listening to me when I try to talk to you direct, one-on-one. -on -one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drive this up over here so that you can't do as much as you'd like to do this. You can't. And I'll prevent you from being able to do that. And then hopefully, somewhere along the line, you're going to have enough sense in your head to say, you know what, I think I know why God's doing this. Amen? Amen. I think I know why the Lord didn't give me a job. I think I know why the Lord didn't allow me to have any money. Yes, amen. I think I figured it out, Lord. And once you figure it out, now it's time to address the problem. Amen. Now it's time to say, okay, Lord, I'll tell you what, let's make a deal. You be Monty, what's his name there? <laughs> that old TV show. I'll dress up like a chicken, yes. and you may, let's make a deal. And yes. here's the deal, Lord. I'll make a commitment to fly right and do the right thing. Yes. If you'll help me so yes. that I can get out of being broke all the time. You hear what I'm telling you? Amen. See, a lot of preachers get on TV and act like God wants to make everybody prosperous. God wants everybody in the church to be rich. God wants everybody in the church to have everything. Well, I got a little news for you. Not everybody in the church could handle it if they had it. That's right. Amen. And God isn't stupid. If an earthly father isn't dumb enough to give a kid don't know how to deal with money, a hundred or a thousand dollars, why in the world would God? Yes, amen. amen. My Bible said God gives to every person according to their ability to receive. Yes, that's right. But Paige, if you're not going to know what to do with it, or if you're going to do the wrong thing with it when you get it, yeah, God's not going to give it to you. Yeah, I do right thing. Amen. <laughs> so we need to make a commitment. We need to make up our mind and say, you know what? The Lord opens up, and I'm going to tell you, you don't want to break a bargain with the Lord. That's right. I never have. Amen. You don't want to break a bargain with the Lord. You you start making deals with God. The Bible said, don't vow a vow. That's right. Because you, you haven't got the power to change one hair of your head a different right. color. The Word of God tells us, don't, don't vow a vow. The Roman Catholic Church come along and created what we call wedding what? Vows. Yes, that's right. Yep. And yet the word of the Lord tells us, don't vow a vow. Yeah, exactly. Because, honey, if you vow a vow and you don't keep that vow, you're going to stand responsible to God for it. Oh, Lord. Amen. Amen. So don't be bartering with God. Say, well, Lord, bless God, if you'll give me a job and I can have some money, I promise I won't spend none of that money on booze. And then first thing you do with your paychecks, run down to the liquor store to cash it. <laughs> Hello. Amen. 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 You don't want to make that mistake. Lord, I won't use drugs if you'll give me a job. I promise, Lord, I won't do it. And you go cash your check, and before you leave the PLS, you're talking to the nearest pusher. Yeah, that's right. Come on now. Preacher being honest. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. What am I trying to tell you tonight? I'm trying to tell you how to get out of the hole yet. Yeah, I know how to get out of the hole. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you got to make I you got to money wisely than I used to. You gotta, that's right. You gotta make a commitment to do the right thing and then maybe you better stick with it. You gotta make a commitment and say, I'm gonna do the right thing and I'm gonna, Lord, if you'll open this door for me, I'm gonna do the right thing. Amen. Say, well, brother, why are you talking about all this? I'm trying to help you understand why things sometimes happen the way they do. It's not that God's judging us. It's not that God's chastising us. Let me tell you, it's not God's anger that's doing it, Paige. It's God's love. He's keeping us out of trouble. He's keeping us from making a bigger mess than we've already made. So it has nothing to do with the anger of God. It has nothing to do with the Lord's uh, wrath. Or his right. anger, Amen. it has to do with his love. He's saying, right. Amen. you know what? I'd love to be able to trust this one with this, but I can't yet. That's right. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold off on it for a while. Amen? Amen. I'll tell you, I've learned in my life, it's hard to learn. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yes, amen. And I've learned things that took me so long. I'm sure God was in heaven thinking, I'll tell you, that boy will be dead a thousand years before he figures this one out. <laughs> He'll be sitting up here in heaven at a yeah. desk saying, well, you know, I don't quite get it yet. <laughs> Andy, I'll be listening to the angels sing for 10,000 years, and all of a sudden you're going to hear me down the corridors of heaven say, ah! I get it now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> because it, sometimes things just can't get through this thick skull of mine. You know what I'm talking Amen. about? Amen. And But I've learned, honestly, yeah. in serving God as many years as I've known the Lord, I've learned, Paige, that God is sincerely speaking through circumstance. Yes, our circumstances are not completely, totally out of his control. We sit there and say, oh, Lord, change this, change that. But you know what? What we need to do is say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Yes, amen. What is this circumstance trying to tell me? Amen. Amen. Are you trying to tell me, maybe, that if, if you give me a little, I'll go hog wild crazy off here and buy myself a rose? <laughs> when I should be looking at a Volkswagen? Yeah. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah, I, I still am learning lessons when yeah, it comes to finances and, you know, how to handle money and all. See, I'm not one of them preachers, Andy, that claims to be perfect in everything. I, I wished I could be one of them, but I'm just not. Mm -hmm. I still learn every day new lessons, you know, uh -huh. and, and I let the Lord speak to me through circumstances. Yeah. One of the things that, you know, even myself, I've looked for work and all that. And Tommy knows that I'm about to say the truth. He knows me. If you give me half a chance, I'll work myself to death. Seriously. You give me half a chance, and I'll work myself straight into the grave. And maybe the Lord's saying sometimes, no, you know what? You don't need to do all that. It may not be as easy to live by faith, but it's better for you, because you'll wind up sick, you'll wind up yeah, wearing right. your body out. I've known a lot of preachers, I've known a lot of people that work so hard that they wear their body plumb out. Amen. And that's what I wind up doing. Maybe that's what God's trying to tell me. I don't know. But you see, sometimes God speaks to us through circumstances. The tower falling isn't always God's judgment. It isn't always God's wrath. Sometimes... Right. It is simply a matter of, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right, Sometimes it's a matter of, the Lord is not trying to chastise me, not trying to rebuke me, but he's trying to speak to me. Yes, amen. He's trying to get my attention, and he's amen. trying to give amen. me a little bit of guidance and put me in the right direction. Yes. So I want to encourage you tonight. This is all I felt on my heart to share amen. tonight. Amen. Look at your present circumstance. Amen. Right. You say, well, the Lord didn't answer in my prayer about this. Well, why? What if he did? If he did give you what you're asking for, would there be a potential problem? And if there would be, then you need to address it. You know, even Dr. Phil, bless his heart, I shouldn't quote Dr. Phil. I think it's a heresy, but I'm not sure. Even Dr. Phil says, you can't fix nothing if you don't acknowledge it's broke. Yes, that's right. That's Amen. Right. And if we're going to look all the time and say, Lord, everything's perfect, I'm perfect, everything I do is perfect, yes. and the Lord's trying to show us something that's broke, but we don't yes. want to see it, and we don't want to recognize it, well, you know what? We're never going to get out of that situation. Amen. We're never going to get out of that place. Because to get out of that place, all he's waiting for us to do is say, Aha, I see it. I see where the potential problem lies. Lord, I see what you want me to address before you do this for me. Amen. I see what you want me to address before you answer this prayer. And then address it. Deal with it. Amen. Pray about it. Help. Ask the Lord to help you get victory over it. And I'm going to tell you a little secret from the Holy Ghost tonight. If you got friends that are going to take you down the wrong path, Every time you get around them, here's a little piece of advice. Don't go around them. Amen. Amen. I don't know how hard that is to understand. Don't go around them. And I'll tell you something else. If they come around, send them packing as fast as you can send them packing. 
Amen. You know, Nancy Reagan had a good slogan years ago. She started that campaign, Just Say No, about drugs and all that, alcohol and everything. And people thought when she first came up with that, they thought she's plumb crazy. They said, well, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Just say no. Uh -huh. Do you know that that has been the most successful drug prevention program that ever was created? Amen. It's the most successful in history. Why? Because she taught kids and she helped not only kids, but some adults yes. that haven't got enough sense. Well, she helped them to understand that all you got to do is open your little chirper and say, no thank you. And if no thank you don't work, then you say no. And if no don't work, you say, listen, get out of my face. I'm not interested. Amen. Hello now. Yes, amen. Listen, Paige, if they're not going to listen to you when you're being nice, then quit being nice. Amen. Amen. Hello amen. now. If they're not going to listen to you when you're trying to be sweet, well, then for God's sake, quit being sweet. Yes, amen. I was in a car as a teenager, and I'm closing with this little tale here, the story. I was in a car with a girl that I was kind of dating. I was like 16. And this fellow was driving that we knew. And her brother. And her brother was quite the little pothead, you know. Back in my day, that's about all we had practically was pot. I don't, you know, of course, I don't know. I've never used a drug in my life, so I can't even tell you what all the others were. I'm sure there were something else out there, speed oh and all that. Angel dust and all that stuff. But I'll tell you, we were in this car, and all of a sudden they thought they were going to get cute, and they were going to start smoking pot in the car with all the windows rolled up, and I'm sitting in the back seat of that car. And it was a Cadillac uh, El Dorado, so it was only two doors. I couldn't just, like at a stoplight, I couldn't just open the door and get out. And they started doing this thing. They knew I was squeaky clean, you know, and I was a Christian boy, and I was a and they thought, ah, ha, ha, we're going to get him high on contact smoke. He, 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 he. I said, y'all quit that garbage. No, ha, 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 we're funny. I said, you're going to be real funny when I put my foot through the window of your car. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen, Paige. You hear me now? Amen. Yeah. Now, I try to be nice. But after, if once nice don't work, it's time to quit being nice. Yes, amen. Amen. If you're going to do the right thing and keep yourself where you need to be, yes, sometime right. you've got to learn to get ugly. Amen. Hello now. Yes, amen. If that's what it takes, then that's what you need to do. And I literally said, I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you all 10 seconds to put those things out or my heel goes right through the window of this car. And I meant it with every ounce of my being. I'd have knocked that window right out of that car. Amen. Wouldn't have thought twice about it, and Andy wouldn't have felt sorry, neither. That's right. You want to act the fool, act the fool on your time, but you're not going to bring me into something I don't want to be in. Amen. Amen. So if you find for some reason that you're around people and they want to do the wrong thing and they don't like it when you say, nah, I don't want to do that, well, then quit saying, nah, I don't want to do that, and say, listen, get out of my face. I don't want you in my house with that junk. I don't want you around me with that junk. If you're going to be carrying that trash, then don't even know my name. Don't even know my address. Yes, amen. Hello now. Amen. I had a birthday party in New York City years ago, and one of my guests, a fellow I knew in New York, went and carried something to the house that I was not in church at that time. Uh, for a couple of years, I was out of church. And I wasn't in church at that time, I don't believe. And I don't think so. Anyway, and uh, I hate to tell a fib, so I'm trying to, you know, I'm thinking in my mind, are you, are you sure? But anyway, and uh, he pulled something out at my birthday party. And I looked and I said, what in the world? He said, oh, I'm just going to. I said, oh, no, you ain't. Mm -hmm. It was a black or white. said, no, sir. I said, you, you, are, you ain't taking that out in my house. Well, it don't hurt nobody. I said, it doesn't come out in my house. That's right, amen. I don't care what house or where you do it, you ain't doing it in my house. Amen. Now, this was somebody I was friendly with. This was somebody I liked. He was a good person. Yeah, amen. Yeah. But, Paige, I went from friendly to not so friendly in a heartbeat. Yeah. Because when you think you're going to compromise my standard, you yeah. think you're going to bring something into my world that I don't need in my world, Amen. you're wrong. Amen. I'm going to set that straight in a hurry. I'm going to let you know this fast. 
Amen. Listen, I've been down that road. I've, I've, you know, I've had enough trouble in my life. Some of us have known trouble. Some of us been in jail. Some of us have been arrested. Right. Some Amen. of us, been, you know, and right. sweetheart, you ain't gonna carry me back there. I ain't going back there for you or nobody right. else. Amen. And if you can't hear me when I tell you no, I'm not interested. Then how about I stick my boot up your backside? Amen. Hello now. Mm -hmm. Amen. So understand today, Lord, why aren't you answering my prayer? Maybe he's trying to talk to us. Yes, amen. And if he is, well, what are you trying to say? And then listen. Mm -hmm. And when he tells you, address it. Don't don't say, well, Lord, that's not an issue. Well, if it wasn't an issue, he wouldn't be addressing it. Amen. amen. If it wasn't an issue, he wouldn't be trying to talk to you about it. That's right, amen. Amen, okay. That's a simple word of exhortation tonight. You get something out of that? Amen. I hope you did. Amen.